HTB family, how's it going? Welcome to Hold the Ball. That's right, using the Fleur Ball, you may notice a, a bit of a change of an intro there. Uh, tell me what you think, but I look and say, I hope you guys are well. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it very, very much. Yes, this is Born All Chat number 25. As you guys know, I normally have done it live with other people, but uh, due to uh, time constraints and myself not being too flash, I decided to uh, do this one here recorded so I can edit it out in case, uh, yeah, you know, I cough or whatever. But uh, look, it's not too bad, but I digress. Anyway, we'll get into it. Um, hit the intro. Guys, here we go. So, Born and All Chat, I just talk about a few topics, discussions, personal thoughts and opinions and as you the viewer please feel free to comment your thoughts on it as well um, again it probably goes about i don't know 15 to 20 minutes give me your thoughts we'll get into is the tigers right and and i suppose why them winning is good for rugby league so as we all know the tigers i mean even from last year into this season too particularly in the first part um they've been criticized highly criticized uh, a, a lot of rumors a lot of uh, i suppose hammer throwing down their way and uh, that hasn't boded well, not only for the team itself, but I'm sure for the fans. Now, uh, as of late, um, the Tigers were uh, not doing too well, to be honest with you guys. Um, if anything, it was actually quite poor. I do believe they did actually get to a 0-5 and five start uh, for the season, which um, is almost a, uh, a guaranteed knockout, right, heading into the top eight. It's just not going to happen. And then, uh, obviously, we know what happened, right? They play the Eels in a game where I think... 95% of us tipsters by their own fans probably tipped the um, by, by their own Tigers fans tipped the uh, you know the Eels to win and uh, as we all know that game there I think uh, and I've explained it myself I was very emotionally invested in that game purely because you know it's not my team but you still want to see something good out of them right uh, it's funny how our teams can sort of uh, encapsulate human emotion right like your team doing something can almost be adjacent to how human beings are doing things right whether it be a team losing trying their best like somebody who is you know just trying their hardest and, and sometimes things just aren't going their way but they're trying right and it's just funny how a team can embody human emotion and uh, i think for myself personally uh, as i was invested very invested in that game though i took the, the eels i was actually cheering for the tigers each step of the way and every try they got you're sort of warming up to the idea that hey they probably could to be fair you guys they did look the better team but um yeah, there's something that needs to be said, though, about teams that are just like the Tigers who are down and out and um, are trying and, and ain't getting anywhere, and then they do. It, it's such a beautiful feeling, and obviously they won that game, right, courtesy of Jackson Hastings with that beautiful drop goal. Um, you could probably say it was one of the moments of the year, uh, to be fair with you guys, and I'm sure as uh, 2022 postseason arrives, I'm sure you can put that up there in the top echelon of, of moments for the game this year. Um, and then, lo and behold, they have the Rabbitohs, another tough task, and I think a lot of people... You know, probably had the Rabbitohs winning, though you wouldn't be amiss if you were sort of backing on the Tigers to do something. It's sort of like, uh, I guess, a momentum shift for them, and I think that's exactly what had happened, or what we thought anyway. Now again, um, the game happened, and obviously it was a bit of a tight arm wrestle. Tries there, tries there, controversy here, controversy there, such as rugby league. But the point being, this man in focus here was Luke Brooks, and I think we all know how Luke Brooks has been treated by the media, whether you like him, whether you don't. The point is he's been highlighted, and not for the right reasons. More recently as well, uh, Luke Brooks' uh, deal heading into next year was highlighted, right? He's got over a million dollars, I believe, a season after that. I think it's for like a year or two. I'm not not sure of the length there, but point being a million dollars next year. And uh, if you compare what he's getting next year to how he's been playing the last couple of years, be it since he's been at the Tigers, you're probably thinking, how on earth did he get it? Again, it's not for me to decide, not for you to decide, really. It is what it is. Right, he didn't sign it. Uh, he, you know, he he didn't. Uh, you know, the Tigers signed them, right? So ultimately, it's it's on them. Well, w w if you're a Tigers fan, you whip, and if you're not too phased by it, hey, that that is fine as well. Now, the moment came, and he delivered. Right, Luke Brooks won them the game against the Rabbitohs. Now, again, the point being, how good is it that teams that are trying and struggling get somewhere at the end? And now we look. Uh, to a team that they're versing in the Dragons. And for me, though I tip the Dragons to win, I won't be surprised if the Tigers do. I mean, to be fair with you guys, again, they've shown time and time again the last couple of games that if push comes to shove, they do have the grit to do it. 
Rabbitohs and, and, and Eels are no easy bets uh, to the teams that are going to be in the top six, right? And you have a team like the Tigers who have been lavishing in the bottom for quite some time, rising up to the challenge, doing well, doing good. Now, for the whole team, Jackson Hastings, his redemption story against the Eels. Luke Brooks, his redemption story, you know, against the Rabbitohs. And obviously, uh, the, the overall context of it being Michael Maguire, uh, you know, the, the coach, um, Madge, uh, soaking it all in and being positive about it and again showing that they are trying um, I personally do feel for, for match there these few times when you see him and he you just look like the, the bloke's either not sleeping or he's just emo an emotional wreck um, and for him again to, to be lifted by these boys it's such a good story so yeah look for me it's so important and yes uh, it's important because it brings us together as fans you know we, we all love to see the old underdog I think it's a collective thing but at the same time when the team or the you know is, is not doing too well you want to see a lift and that's exactly what we got but in my point of view it's important to see them do well because it's good to see that there are teams there that are trying to actually get results we you just want to see a team do well obviously granted there must be somebody who was placed 16th in this game of rugby league nrl still though when you see a tiger when, t when you see a, t a team like the tigers that have been through so much controversy it just does something to, to us as humans right as people connect with the game and i think it's so cool and it's so important and i think it's the reason why tiger's doing well it's so important for rugby league gus gould decides to coach and and train basically the bulldogs now guys uh if you guys aren't sure as to what happened basically gus gould enters the room for the players there and uh, apparently he praises the the reserve grade team for their win and he directs his attention to the you know the top grade team and he gives them all the shellacking particularly uh reportedly carl flanagan as well now my thoughts on that, obviously, Gus Gould is the, uh, you know, he's, he's the dude, he's the go-to at the Bulldogs, I believe, you know, he's their GM, right? He's the dude that's running the things, calling the shots. Um, if you're Trent Barrett in that situation, you're probably looking at this thinking, I hope this is not an overthrow, I hope this is not a, a, a forewarning or, you know, forcing of things to come. Because for me personally, Gus Gould taking over that, I don't know how, how you may feel about it, but I feel like it's a bit of a spit in the face, honestly, of... Uh, of Trent Barrett, I, th I think that's that. That's it. It's almost like a slap in the face, so to speak. Um, ironically, and for Gus Gould to step in, particularly when he's not a coach, uh, you know, now I don't know. I mean, to be fair with you, I I'm assuming Gus Gould didn't step in this position thinking that the Bulldogs would be lavishing a, a 16th place. I think he came here with high ambitions. I would assume at least a top, you know, like at least at 11. 12, 10 9 sort of finishing there thereabouts uh for you know for for them to sort of build upon you know heading into next season and here they are no better than what they were last year it's actually quite concerning to be fair of you guys um and actually uh shows that though you have a team there that that is good you got you got your mixes of Vaughan, you got your mixes of Adoka, burton you know what i mean bongai jr uh dufty so to speak again these aren't players that are you know trash bottom feeders no they're actually quite good players and i think um just to go back to what you know the bulldogs have done uh, so to speak collectively I, I think for them to to have integrated all these type of players together to to mash them up and then for them just to be lavishing at 16th that would make anyone infuriated anyone particularly the fans i i don't know how bulldogs fans feel but i'd love to get someone who's a bulldogs fan to come have a yarn with me let me know you know, let's talk about the Bulldogs. Let's let's dive deep into them, you know what I mean? Um, but in saying that, again, back to Gus Gould. So he comes and he trains the boys, right? And, uh, you know, apparently they trained the house down. Trip Barrett says, you know, he's the boss technically, so if he wants to do it, well, hey, so be it. I need the hand, sure. Basically paraphrasing. I think that's scary signs, actually. I think that's not a good sign. If you're, uh, if you're Trent Barrett, that's not a good sign. Um... This might be a setup. Like I said, I think it's the smells of overthrow. The smells of of a man whose job is probably out the window. And and I know Gus Gould has done well to defend Trent Barrett as a coach in the public eye. But again, we don't know what's happening internally. You know, uh, Gus Gould's a, a very active user on Twitter. Um, but again, I'm sure he means business behind it all, really. And uh, the reality is, when he got annoyed, the players that it just shows you that he's a man who's competitive. He's a man that has a drive, and he's a man that wants to see results not only for him but for the staff themselves. And obviously for the, for the players, for the fans, right? So again, for him to take it on his shoulders and basically coach, so to speak, for that day, whether day or days, who knows, really, um, shows you, you know, what his characteristic is about. But at the same time, 
it's a very very worrying signs in my opinion anyway for Trent Barrett tell me what your thoughts are there and this might stir up a bit of controversy uh, but I love this here and again side note I'm a Blues fan but please don't let that deter you from bringing in your opinions hey you think the Blues suck let me know but I uh, look in saying that we have Puppenhausen you know Puppenhausen sorry he is, uh, you know, look, as far as I'm concerned, is he the man for the job at fullback for New South Wales? Absolutely, yes, he is. Uh, there's some key pointers there I need to talk about. Quickly, he's currently lead on Dalian board. He's such, such a sharp player. He showed it against the Warriors, and he showed it against other teams in the past as well. Even last season, had it not been for his injury as well, right? And he sort of was creeping up too, you know, uh, post-injury as well. Papenhusen, to me, is, is the all-round in terms of fullback pace. Uh, look, you, you may not like what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say if you're a Queensland fan and, and you think that he shouldn't be, it's just because you're scared that he's going to whip your guys' butt. Simple as that. I, I get the other end of this coin, the Tedesco, these the experience, right? There's somebody who's been, quote unquote, battle hardened in the Origin Arena. But sometimes you just got to roll the dice. I mean, we as Blues fans, I think, have criticized Queensland in the past for just being just having you know cam smith and co play and this is the result now but at the same time we, we shouldn't be saying that if we're not in turn looking back into ourselves and thinking hey maybe we should blood some young talent there's obviously a, a you know a bit of an age difference between, between the desco and and puppin Houston, but there's also uh on top of that as well experience but in saying that if you look at the storm and roosters though the roosters aren't too bad it's still night and day to be fair with you guys and puppin Houston is the leader of that you know Again, he's a smaller body, sure, but again, with a, with a decent squad, he's still a good player. Defensive deficiencies aside, he's still a good player, in my opinion. So yeah, back back to the question: Is he, in my you know, in my opinion or your opinion? What are your thoughts? But is he the best choice? In my opinion, he is. I would pick him in a heartbeat to be the uh, the Blues uh, fullback. End of. As to where you place Desco, I'm not sure. That's not for me to talk about. Um, I don't know. You know, it's not my business there. But as as if I was uh, the coach there, honestly, if if I'm if I'm Fitler, I'm seriously contemplating putting Puppenhusen at fullback. What he can do is unspeakable. It's it's really consistent too, and I think that's a really important thing. Again, you know, Tedesco does doesn't mind doing a bit of the hard running and stuff, but Puppenhusen just knows how to find gaps. He works well in gaps. He's a fast player, fast customer, and I think honestly, in terms of just trying to. Uh, Breed something different. Breed something different for the Blues. I think he's he's the he's the right way to go about it. And to be fair, you guys, um, depending if Travojevic and Mitchell get back, this may be a new looking Blues backline as well, right? But uh, yeah, for me, Papenhuizen definitely fullback for uh, the Blues. But tell me your thoughts. Talakai versus Kotoni Stags, and we all know Sifa Talakai for the Sharks, Kotoni Stags for the Broncos. Now, both these players, in my opinion, or more so Stags, has built a reputation. Of just being a very slick, hard defending, running ball, running player, right? He's he's got that in him. Talagai, in my opinion, though he's been very known as a beast in second row, has found something new uh, being in the center. So much so to the point where that Titans uh, replicated it, right? And Holbrook bringing Fifita into play centers. Now with Talagai, there's one thing about him that that cannot be understated or ignored. He is a flat-out beast, man, as, as a center. End of story. It doesn't matter. He is a beast, right? Even even in that loss against the Storm, he was still carving up, you know, just a physical presence, man, just an absolute ball running. Oh, tell you what. Now, on the defensive end, you know, hey, not bad, not good, not the best, but not bad. Whereas Kotoni Stags, I think anyway, has more the upper hand defensively. However, in saying that, with the ball in hand, he's not like that Tala guy running, right? You know, that guy likes to run at people, bust them over, sort of reminds you of uh, uh, Aiken to Conrad Harrell to a degree. Whereas Stags to me is more that Fendi type, right? A little bit of a step, a little bit of a fend, but he has a very good acceleration though. That's one thing I like about uh, Kotoni Stags. Once he steps you on the outside, he's got a really sort of fast little zip there. And uh, I think uh, for me, yeah, bodes well. Now, when you sort of think about these two players and who you'll pick, it's, it's apples and oranges to me anyway, personally, because the way they play is different. Though they still have that physical presence when, when they run the ball, it's just different ways of applying it. Defensively, though, if you're looking at it, you know, you I think you'll pick Gotoni Stags ultimately, right? And and again, it depends on how uh, trustworthy you are of, of your second rows, you know, your inside men. But in saying that, that's what I'd pick. Now, in terms of overall game, 
look that's for anyone there to, to talk about but for me who would I pick out of those two there look for me I want to pick uh, Sifa Talakai uh, I think that Talakai to me just I'm just enamored in that uh you know I'm just uh, how do I even say it? I'm just I'm just in love with that beast like play with the ball in hand stuff um he can create he's got a fast run on him he's so strong good catch and pass can catch the ball well he's got silky hands as well for a big fella and he's just a strong determined bulldozer basically but for me in that battle though i like Kotoni's chances uh in terms of overall speed perhaps and especially in the defensive end though the oh these guys are so good it's really hard actually toss of a coin stuff but for me I think I want to go with Dalakai purely because of that immense strength and just immense overall running power he has that backs him anyway. But yeah, tell me, who would you pick out of Kotoni Stags? Sifa Dalakai. Now, this topic here is not by me, um, but I also want to bring some discussion, right? These topics we talk about in any discussion, I want to bring forth as well. Now, this is actually by Twitter user Flea. Um, again, I don't have his at, my apologies, but I just want to, you know, credit him for this. So basically, the point is that the, the statement or, the, or, you know, is the discussion is rugby league or you know following sports teams any sports team of any sport is a business right it is a business and um, it's entertainment business and if you don't like it you don't have to watch it you don't have to follow them you can change it and follow someone else and uh, i suppose as fans you have that right to but how do you sort of respond to it when you're actually a very you know ardent very hardcore fan like myself or the warriors or like yourself with whatever team you follow myself or the warriors raptors and Fremantle dockers i guess um to, to say the least might even chuck in the Auckland Blues. But yeah, for yourself, what you know, your so different sporting teams, and if they're losing, how you sort of feel. And yeah, so so my um, my thoughts on it overall. Look, um, I support the Warriors, and to be fair with you guys, you know the results. Not even not even just recently, but literally uh, since the whole since we commenced right in '95. Um, look, rugby league or, or sports in general. It's it's how do I say it? Sports in general. When, when you're looking at it from an outside perspective, you, you probably think of it as just. You know, one team here, one team there, they clash, one team wins, one team loses. Why does everyone get emotionally invested? But I suppose as fans, again, the reason why we do is because there's that inner tribalism, right? There's that whole identity of self, as in you can find yourself in that team, right? That team there represents you, right? For example, I'll, I'll even say uh, say the Bulldogs, for example, right? It's not only the Dogs of War, we, we know the Dogs of War, right? Now, uh, with that being said, the Dogs of War is... is something that's the stage they went through that that in my opinion anyway just showed how good they were but as fans you know even though they're playing bad now you still go back to that moment right i suppose you draw back to that and so the way i sort of look at it is society as a whole has made it so that in the context of sport you almost feel guilty if you don't like the you know if you don't want to follow them but at the same time society is also saying well if you don't like you don't have to follow them too at the same time i feel like these two sides to it but I can only speak from one perspective because that's all I know. For me, it's just Warriors. That's it. That's all I know. That's all I, I, I can talk about, really, right? I've seen them through the ups and the downs. And to be fair with you guys, there's actually been a lot more downs than ups. The ups, even at our peak, didn't get us what we wanted, right? The premiership. So again, was it really, did it really eventuate to anything at the end? No, it didn't. The reality is it's probably down, down, down. Tiny bit of up, but still down at the end. Now, I personally find that uh, that statement is... I don't know, I don't, it's all subjective, but I don't find it easy to talk about because I wouldn't do it, I can't do it. I can't look at the Warriors playing well, like if, if they literally were wooden spoons for the next 10 years, well, so be it, that's my team, right? It's, it's just who I am, it's just, that's my team I'm, I'm invested in, right? That's all I can talk about, that's all I can focus on. Now, obviously, again, you look at successful teams and of course you want your team to be like that, you know what I mean? I, it, it absolutely pains me, right? To, to think of the Roosters, for example, going back to back, right? Back to back, and us Warriors not even being able to win one premiership since 95, since we've been in. You know what I mean? Like, like that hurts, right? But again, that point of can you jump? It's a results driven business and it is entertainment. Yes, you can. I think of it, yes, you can. You can actually switch and, and, and be it and find another team. Yes, you can. Like, you're allowed to. Like, that is actually okay. I, I personally find no issue of it. Like, it is what it is. You do your thing. But for me, I can't. However, I think where I draw the line of the sand is that if you go follow another team and then the team you used to follow does well and you come back, that's where I draw the line of the sand. That's why I say, nah, you got to go. Sorry, this is not for you, right? Because the other end of the spectrum of supporting a team for the hard times is they hope that they 
again, what I'm talking about, that, that, that thought of self and, and how you find yourself in that team, you love that team, if they're finding themselves and in going in through a good phase, you're going to be there, aren't you? You're going to watch them, right? That's the reality, right? And you're going to back them through the bad and the good. <clears throat> now, again, back to that statement, just quickly. It is what it is, you know? It is subjective, but there is tribalism in there, and, and I think it is healthy and important for sport. It's good to have your fans that, that verse each other, banter and stuff like that, and all that jazz that comes with it, you know, much like us YouTubers who talk about it. It's, it's important to have that stuff because that's how this works. That's how it works. But again, you know, how would you feel if somebody you're watching, say, for example, myself or whoever it is, was supporting one team you support and then they up and left and followed another team? That would be a crazy thing. But again, for that statement, it rings true in the sense that you can, but I wouldn't personally. Would you? For me, nah, I couldn't. But yeah, I get it. Rugby league is entertainment. It is. You know, you feel like jazz one day, then you listen to rock the next. Hey, I wake up, I like reggae now, and then hey, I'm back to, uh, you know, hip hop the next day. You know? Yeah, it is what it is. A very subjective sort of a topic, though. It's, it's, it's very broad in that sense, but yeah, give me your thoughts on it. Last topic for Ball Nor Chat, episode 25. Dropping bad players, right? And um, for bad performances, is it good or bad? Look, for me personally, I can probably just finish this, this off by saying it's good, but there needs to be more in depth discussion. Now, when you have a player that plays well, it's great, right? As fans, it's, it's good. For, as coach, it's good. Obviously, for them, as a person, it's good. Now, when they're playing bad, it's, it's not great, right? For the fans, for themselves, for the coaches, all that stuff. Again, I talked about it before, but rugby league is a results-driven business. That's the reality. And if they're not playing well, you need to drop them. If you're, for example, if, if a ply, pilot wasn't that good at flying, you wouldn't want them to fly, would you? Now, again, I'm not trying to compare flying to playing the game of rugby league. It's two different things, but you get what I mean, right? Or, or I could even say a musician, right? If that musician was having off day playing in a live gig, there's no way you'd want that musician to be playing again, right? And in, in the context of rugby league, if there's a player there that's not playing well, you sort of think, why do coaches keep selecting him, right? Um, but look, in saying that, I digress. The reality is, it has to be done, right? These, there's no excuse for for bad players to keep playing. There's no excuse for players with down form to keep playing, unless it's either depth or injury. But if you can, you should, right? Um, not only for the sake of your fans, but also for that player as well. Sometimes I feel the more you leave a player and trust them, quote unquote, trust them when they're playing bad, they actually the, the more their confidence drops. I think anyway. But in saying that, like, what are your thoughts on it? You know. That's what I think anyway. You know, it's just a small little subject to touch on. But anyway, guys, that's Ball and All Chat, episode 25. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Yes, I'll hope to uh, get back into more live soon. But for now, here it is, recorded. In saying that, though, I had fun. Some topics there for you guys to comment on, talk about. Let me know. But uh, yeah, in saying that, hope you guys are well. Be well. Take it easy. See you guys next time. Just remember, 